going to start in sheets. This is 12.2, another video with a rain background. I'll go down and here's 12.2. I can't edit the original file, so I'm going to use make a copy of the file. I'll call it a copy of 12.2. And the Apple opened that up. It presumes I want to work with it. As I noted over here, when graphing, do not select column A. The focus is on whether CO2 levels are related to temperature. I'm going to make a graph. It's going to take some selecting on my phone. I just want to graph those two columns. I'll go to plus, put in a chart. I don't need the legend. The scatter chart is a, the only type of chart I want. But at the legend, I'll take that off. I cannot alter the x-axis, although it might be indeed a useful thing to do to better see the patterns that might be happening up at the top of the chart. There's no way to, to work with that. I have no ability to control the axis that I know of from here. So there's my chart. It looks horizontal. And if the slope is zero, then there would really be no relationship between the two variables. But whether the slope is actually zero, if the slope is zero, the correlation will be zero, and there'll be no, uh, no relationship. But it's hard to know with this particular chart. You can see here I'm stretching it out vertically to try to see if I can tease out more meaning here. Uh, it's not really clear from this view whether or not that's zero it kind of looks like it's flat but maybe it's not maybe it's just a small incremental change and so that's where statistics become important so i'll set this aside for now uh, maybe bring that off to this side here and start working down here i note that my data is a pretty big set so i'm going to go ahead and type values in it runs from C2 all the way down to C61 here, B61, up to C2. So I'll start working on that down here. And this just a little so I can kind of fit it in. Uh, so I know what I'm doing. I'm going to, I want to see what that slope might be. And so I'm going to have to manually type this in from my phone. Equals the slope of... C2, not B. Remember, we put in the Y values first and then the X values. All the way down to that C61 I can see just above me. Comma, B2 to B61. And you can see by the red that I'm selecting all of the values. Whoops, one too many. Put in the word E, letter E, slope. So I do have a slope, but it's not exactly as mathematically zero, but it's small. So the second thing to check at this point would be the correlation. The y-intercept is just going to be, that's going to be a strange thing because it would be where there is zero carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that doesn't actually make any sense. The planet has always had some carbon dioxide. So that particular value would not make a lot of sense. But if we're looking for a relationship, then in statistics we want to know the correlation. And uh, that's what I'll put in here. Let's see if I can uh, get a little fancy here. Copy. Come over here. Come here. I'm going to try to paste. Just paste it in. Yeah, making sure that I've got the same letters in the same place. That way I only have to retype the function, a little end run. Making sure I've got everything 
C2, C61, B2, B61. That's a bit of a surprise. The correlation there is 0.58. Uh, let's shrink this guy up. I can do that for now. That correlation is 0.58. So that's a little surprising uh, in that it's moderate. It's not low. It's not weak. It's certainly not zero. It's a moderate correlation. So that actually tells me that the graph is not being entirely honest with me in the sense that there really is a relationship between these two variables. It's a positive relationship because the slope and the correlation are both positive. In fact, if I go and look at the coefficient of determination, the uh, coefficient of determination, that's just going to be equal to uh, that value there squared. So I'm going to hit the uh, equals that value. And now I've got to go get the uh, squared symbol out. Take that out of this menu. That little carrot symbol. Squared. That is, means 0.34. That means that 34% of the variation we're seeing in the slope accounts for the variation we're seeing in the... Uh, sorry, in the... 34% uh, of the variation in the carbon dioxide accounts for the variation we're seeing in the, the temperature, about 34%. So that's, um, that suggests there really is a connection here between the two. One other thing, the slope is positive. It's small. We're talking about 0 0.015 degrees Fahrenheit uh, per, uh, one per uh, carbon for every gain of one in carbon dioxide but it is small and it is it, even though it is small it is positive so temperature does appear to be going up as co2 goes up because if you looked at the numbers the co2 always goes up you would have seen that if you <clears throat> made some kind of graph of these CO2 values. If you just took the CO2 values here and tried to make just a, 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 a chart, you can see the CO2 levels are always going up. It's actually slightly curved. Um, so that, and that, that's of concern. It may be going up faster and faster. But there's that CO2 um, rise. So they're always going up. They're never going down. And that's of concern globally because that's not the history of the planet. The history of the planet is the CO2 goes up and down but stays at about the same level over periods of thousands of years. To see this much change this quickly is unusual. We haven't seen carbon dioxide levels this high in over 800,000 years and probably closer to 3.5 million years on the planet. A long time. So there's some concern there. But the point is... CO2 levels are always going up, and the temperature is also rising, only a small amount. But the global models for global warming suggest that most of the warming will happen at the poles, and very little at the equator. But that said, there is, we're detecting some at the equator. Now, beyond the level of this particular course is what, what would be the p-value here, that is... Is this a significant result? And for this introductory course, this, that's a little beyond the course. But if you have the correlation and the sample size, you can actually determine the uh, p-value against a slope of zero. But as I said, that, that would be uh, a uh, beyond the scope of the course. Uh, but for now, so let me say that we've run that, I've run that calculation, and it does hold up as being significant. Key here is you've got 60 data points and you've got a moderate correlation. And moderate correlations, like a 0.58, almost 0.6, they tend to hold up if you've got a sample of that's this large. They, they've got a pretty good chance of holding up uh, if the uh, 
uh, uh, basically of, of rejecting a possibility of no relationship. So that one you don't have to do. Don't worry about it. We're not uh, we're not trying to do that. Uh, you don't know how to do that yet, how to make that calculation. But you can get the idea if you ever had to go on and do that. That would be a more advanced topic uh, than what we do in this course. For this particular course, I'd be looking for, that's a fine graph. Notice I've got carbon dioxide on the x-axis, temperature on the y-axis. You want to report the slope and you want to report the, uh, the correlation. You can also report the intercept, but in this particular case, it's not as important. I'm going to copy that and uh, go ahead and drop out of this for a minute and come to my slides and make a new presentation. Uh, uh, global warming locally. Whatever. Uh, so, um, this will be what, whatever you want to put down here. Maybe put your name on it. Okay. Uh, that's good. Done with that slide. Add another slide. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in the graph here. I double tap. We'll put in CO2. CO2 versus temperature. Now I can't actually import a graph here. We've talked about that. I can't I can't get that graph over here. So what I'll do is switch back to here. Go find my graph. Get it to fit a little better. There we go. That's what I want. I'll put an outline on it. And you won't see this next piece, but I'm doing a screen capture. You can't see me do the screen capture, but trust me, I'm doing a screen capture. To get a picture of the graph. And with that done, I can now switch back to my slides, paste, I didn't want to paste that in, but so let's go ahead and uh, leave that there for now, let's undo that, undo, 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 <laughs> undo. One more. Yeah, I want to get the graph in here. So I go to plus, image, from photos. There's my graph. Ah, that's what I wanted. So that's the only way I'm going to be able to get a graph in. Now, there's other ways, as I covered in an earlier video on how to do this from a laptop, that's much easier. But that's how you do it on a phone. That's why I'm going ahead and doing this on the phone. This, no, I'm taking this title only. You cannot paste a table into a text box, it turns out. There's my table. I'll move it where I, I'm going to move it here and drag it. And then one of the things I've learned one can do is to increase the font size here. Let's go to here. Oh, text. Take that guy up. Up, 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 up. I'll see take all the text up. Table. No, but I have to do, I have to select all the, the, the yeah, I'm going to try to work on selecting everything. Ooh, a little tricky to try to select all. Boy, I just guess I'll have to work individually. I don't have a good way to get in here and change the text size individually um, there we go so don't select anything that's a learning process I use a laptop more often for this kind of work but uh, these are the basic linear statistics if all you have is a phone make do 
you can still do it. And you can do all these same things on your laptop if you want. One more slide. Uh, no, I guess, uh, well, yeah, conclusion. Probably put in this one. And this would be a discussion of the results. There were questions asked. And so this is where you can now answer those questions based on the work you've just done. You can talk about um, there is a moderate positive correlation between, and goes on and I'm not going to bore you with it. You write it up, your words, your discussion of the, so there's my first, second, third slide. We usually don't leave them so plain. We usually give them a theme. You've got all sorts of themes you could probably use. I don't know. There's one. Let's see how it looks if I use that. Mm, okay. That's getting there. Just as the first slide gets color and then the rest gets something else. Okay. Yeah, probably not that good looking. But you can play with these things and find something you like that works for you. Um, just find something that's got some works, looks nice and adds some color to your, I don't know, whatever you want. A slightly different one. So, oh, that's pretty ugly. <laughs> but that said, there's your basically a presentation, and it's a presentation you submit in these particular ones. Did you resubmit the presentation, not the, uh, not the sheets? Because in the real world, this is what you would present at a conference or a meeting, or you would share it on Zoom and pre Zoom present it. But the presentation is this. One never presents just a raw spreadsheet, or I should say almost never. So there's a rule in statistics to never say never. But uh, almost always you're going to you're going to have some sort of uh, a presentation of some sort, and you can see there's a positive positive correlation. That would be your discussion of your results. There's your graph, and the graph could be made prettier if you had a laptop, but you don't. So you work with what you've got, do what you can do. So even if you're working just from a phone, you can get all your work done. And you're going to have to rely on these statistics. Yes, there's too many decimal places here. So I'll probably knock some off and round this off. Be careful. Get the rounding right. Same thing here. Round it off. It's probably on this guy to keep about maybe four of those guys. But round them off. But four face values that aren't zero. That would be always a good idea to round things off. Uh, when you're doing these sorts of things, press check and there's what your slide will look like. It'll be easier for the audience to read and understand. You'll still have to explain some of this to people. And that's what you should be in the discussion. The slope is telling you how much the temperature is going up each year on average, roughly speaking. And that's that would be a fine solution to, to 12 to the But the slope and correlation are essential. And your graph should be the average CO2 versus the T max temperatures. The years are what we were asking about. We were asking about the relationship between CO2 and temperature. And indeed, yes, global warming is happening here on Pompeii. It's very small, but Pompeii is warming up just a little bit since 1959.